I think th with a certain segment of the population, uh, there were there were polls taken the last few years, and in terms of trust of corporate media outlets, just like the New York Times, and with independents and Republicans, the number has like collapsed. And once you lose trust, it's really hard to regain it. Someone's cheated on their spouse, you're never gonna look at them the same way again, because that person has always been a cheater, even if they have learned their lesson, are you really ever gonna be sure? And when you have these organizations that just have constant propaganda, so on and so forth, but with the Democrats, the trust in corporate media has actually increased over the last few years. <laughs>at the local studio here in Miami and I am glad to be with my good friend Michael Malice who has written a book very apropos my friend The White Pill uh, which I believe is all about Betty White who played of course Rose Nyland on the Golden Girls in Miami so Betty White it's, your it's, feelings it's actually more the case for white nationalism <laughs> Did you ever see when she was I was on only <laughs> able to thumb through it so far. I could, it was half That's white a, nationalism, I, I, half I, Betty White. It's a very <laughs> odd combination, but I get you there at the end. you got to start back in uh, um, St. Olaf. So. so I kid you not, I mean, when I first saw the cover, whenever you released it, maybe six months ago as the tease or whatever, I see this cover. The, bo the book is absolutely beautiful, by the way, and I want to talk about the, the publishing part of it. But I see this cover, The White Pill, and there's a sort of sitcom -y, the font you guys use reminds me of like a 70s sitcom kind of thing. And I'm looking at these women here and then Betty White. I'm thinking this is a whole, I honestly thought for a moment, it's a whole book about the well, Golden it Girls. Well, it actually- So can we just talk about the Golden Girls, which I know you're, you're almost an expert at the level that I am. I think I'm more of an expert. You might be more. Yeah, I think if we had a Golden Girls trivia competition, I think I would wipe the floor with you. You have some of their clothes, don't you? You wear Blanche's no. negligees at night or something? I have Margaret Thatcher's dress. <laughs> and I'm serious. Yeah. And I have two of her bookcases in my house, which as an immigrant is such a sign of like, I've arrived. <laughs> uh, and let me tell you, like, you do not want to know how much it costs to get two 10 foot tall bookcases from London to Austin. It's a lot more expensive than the actual bookcases themselves. Yeah, I, well I want to talk about Austin too because you have fled New York. Yes. You were, a, you were a big time New Yorker. You were a Brooklyn guy. You did not want to leave, but you did. But hold on, first with the book. Yes. Uh, just some technical stuff. So you, you self-published this, right? Yes. This is a self-published book, but a hardcover released on Amazon. It's blowing up. Yes. You're taking out Mike Pence. Yeah, I'm- Like January 6th style, according to, no? No, I'm actually doing it for real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that was good. The, the, I am delighted that we are at a point in time, when you and I were kids, yeah. and people listening to this when they were kids, if you put out your own book, you're a crackpot. And in fact- Yeah, you're a complete nutbag. You're a complete nutbag, yeah. right? And in fact, yeah. I, I have a little hobby. Sometimes I'll get these old self-published books from like 60s, 70s, and you read them, and you think there's gonna be some nuggets in there, and it's really, really bad. Um, I, I have one book I just bought called Belial, the Rebel Angel. There's no references to it online, and it's the guy who meets this angel in prison and tells him about, thanks to quantum physics, all races are the same. It's, it's just, uh, I'm making it sound much more interesting than it is. But the fact that I can be competitive with, you know, Mike Pence, Obama, um, all these other, major household names when I'm nowhere near their level in terms of name recognition just speaks to how much publishing has changed in recent years. And that in and of itself is a white pill because for over a century, if you want to get- Which it, again, white pill. White so pill book. I see what com, you did yeah. there. You said the title of the book in a sense. No, but so, I mean, yeah. I'm speaking to, to the, what the white pill is is yeah. an expression of hope. Yeah. So for a century, uh, you had, if you want, you couldn't have this show 20 years ago. No. I mean, maybe you could have it on PBS, maybe you could have it on, you know, like Fox, maybe let's say 30 years ago. But in terms of publishing, you've got a, a handful of major publishers, which are shrinking. They're get, trying to buy each other out all the time. And if you don't get a book through one of those, you know, all these other outlets pretend you don't exist. Now, that is still the case. The New York Times will pretend I don't exist and, and Politico will pretend I don't exist, sure. But in terms of me reaching an audience and telling a message, not only do I not have to go through a gatekeeper, I also have to waste the year of my life because mm -hmm. as you know, if you get a book deal today on like January 1st, 2023, it's probably gonna come out January 1st, 2025 at the earliest. Whereas yeah. with me, I had it done on a Monday and you know, I have it out you know, within a week or two, so. That was one of the things that I could not believe when I, you know, I did two books and I could not yes. believe, you're, I was like, wait a minute, if I write these things in a couple months, the first one I wrote basically in three months, I was like, I still have to wait a year? Yeah. And then suddenly when they're after that delay, 
it's like, well, I've moved on from some of those ideas at this point. You know, I try to write something timeless, but like things do move forward and you're like, man, this is archaic. Yeah, and publishers complain that like, you know, we're, we're consolidating and we're losing cloud and what are we gonna do about this? But there's not even a hypothetical mechanism for them to turn the ship around and that's a great thing. Uh, similarly in journalism, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if the New York Times wasn't the New York Times, if the New York Times was not in that position to be the officiant and the dictator of, you know, public opinion for a long large swath of the population, I think it certainly would be. Yeah, do you think it's fair to say that it's not anymore? I mean, I think something does feel like it's changing. It's been changing for a long time, but I almost think we're on the other side where it's like, if you were sitting next to somebody at a bar and they were reading the New York Times, if that's still a thing that people do, is that a thing that people do? Probably not. At, at, at bars? At a I don't bar, know bar <laughs> or at a <laughs> coffee, coffee shop. shop. If yes. you were at a coffee shop and somebody was reading the New York Times, I would be looking at them like, man, that is a that is an ill-informed, confused person. Like, I, I think that has now t sort of gained more momentum than the person reading the time. Or you would think, oh, this person is posturing. They want you to ah, see yes, yes, that yes. I'm sitting here reading with their the very New York Times. Coffee. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I think th with a certain segment of the population, uh, there were there were polls taken last few years, and in terms of trust of corporate media outlets, just like the New York Times, and with independents and Republicans, the number has like collapsed. And once you lose trust, it's really hard to regain it. Someone's cheated on their spouse, you're never gonna look at them the same way again, because oh, that person has always been a cheater, even if they have learned their lesson, are you really ever gonna be sure? And when you have these organizations that just have constant propaganda, so on and so forth, but with the Democrats, the act trust in corporate media has actually increased over the last few years. So Is that right? Yes, so we're seeing this bifurcation, oh, good God, but yeah. if the New York Times wants to be the official house organ as you would put it, the left, that's fine. You know, people have much more of an issue with CNN, or at least CNN until the recent heads were rolling, than they had them with MSNBC. Yes. Maddow was, was a leftist, Chris Hayes was a leftist, they have their leftist point of view, go nuts, speak your leftist point of view. Fox has their right wing point of view, Tucker, go nuts, you know, Sean Hannity, we know Sean Hannity's gonna say. CNN, like the New York Times, has this air of objectivity and neutrality, but when push comes to shove, they will always fall on the side of hard left. And I think that disingenuousness is what the issue people have with both the Times and formerly CNN, though decreasingly so. So it's kind of a beautiful thing across industries right now, because not only are you able to get this out independently and it's, it's selling incredibly well, that you were telling me right before we started, I mean, basically because it's hardcover, they, they, you can, they can't even catch up with the printing right. yet, which is, I tried to buy an extra copy this morning. It was literally two weeks yeah. till you could even get it. So it's doing really well. We happen to be sitting in a studio of a tech company that I started that you're huge on right. locals, malice.locals.com. We've started to actually build the things. I think there was this idea for the last couple of years that you know, re Republicans, conservatives, anyone on the right, whatever we hell we all are at this point, uh, we were just gonna complain about everything. But it does seem like it's turning. There were two models for this, right? So back in the, in the late 70s, I believe it was, early 80s, Roger Ailes was trying to start Fox and they wanted him to be like, okay, we want you to be competitive with CNN. He goes, I want to beat uh, CNN. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the other model was for a long time, people, I remember this in the early 2000s, people were like, we need to have a conservative daily show. And I don't think locals is the right wing version of anything. It's no. not trying to parallel something that the left has done successfully. So I think the way to succeed, and I don't think this is necessarily right versus left is, do you want to ape? Do uh, you want to be like How I Met Your Father or do you want to do something that's original that you can't get elsewhere? And by doing it in that way, I think that creates new audiences. And when you have freshness and innovation, that's an apolitical thing. And historically, that has been a function of leftism. Leftism is very highly correlated with uh, innovation, with artistry. And it's only in recent years that you have the organizations that can in some sense be identified as conservative or right leaning, whatever you want to call it, that have been creating things that are original or, uh, um, you know, modeling culture. Is, is that the craziest cultural shift you think we've had? That it's because the lefties were supposed to be the creative ones. That's generally how it always was. The, right. o the openness, right? right. The, openness the conscientiousness. Method, yes, yes. You're going to create great music and art and stuff like that. Now they've become the dogmatic ones, and you have suddenly conservatives creating things. This is this is like a massive psychological shift. I don't think in modern history, meaning let's say post-Civil War, has there ever been red states that are the centers of culture, right? In our childhood, right, it would right. be Boston, yeah. New, which is now kind of not a thing. Yep. Chicago was major when we were kids. Yep. Now it's not a thing at all in terms of creating culture, great food and so on and so forth, but it's not what Chicago was when Oprah and Phil Donahue were there, right? Yeah. In New York and LA, now, 
Austin and Miami are both becoming in their own way cultural hubs. Yep. I can't think of it. Uh, Seattle was a cultural hub in, some, in, in a small way. Portland, Detroit. Um, none of these, but now to have a red state with, you know, Austin is, is a blue city very much. So Miami, I think, has a Republican governor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, Republican mayor and, Republican and, mayor, and excuse governor. Me, Republican obviously. mayor, yeah. I meant. Um, this is historically in America culture unprecedented. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of mindless drivel, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.